the next and the i can say that it's the last topic for this unit that is the theoretical topic that is the sodobug and goodman diagram even we are going to study the modified goodman diagram also it is really really very important for uh, to understand this diagram and it is very simple also let's see it so soderberg soderberg diagram it has been developed on the sn curve only okay sorry on the ultimate let's see this diagram here this is the mean stress value okay and here that is the variable stress value it is sigma v and this is sigma m now what this soderberg did this is sigma e that is your endurance limit and this is sigma y that is your yield strength whenever soderberg diagram is considered yield strength is considered okay just remember this part yield strength is considered that bit Soder soderberg diagram we are going to use it so by joining these two point that is a point and b point we get a line a b here which is shown here okay so this line a b is drawn here now this line is used when the design is based on the yield strength if yield strength is the criteria then Soderberg diagram is used and this line is used here so this is the failure line of Soderberg okay under this there is no failure but after this a failure can occur now just take a suitable factor of safety vector of safety should be one or more than one so divide this sigma y upon factor of safety we will get a value and we name that d here and divide sigma e by factor of safety and you will get a value and we will point it on the graph at point c here now join this c and d we should be parallel to the ab okay so we get this safe stress line that is under the safe stressing that is the factor of safety is considered and this is the region where safe stress is crosses and after this failure will occur after a b line now take a middle point on c and d and we name this point as p now draw a parallel line to this ob from p and it intersect at ao and that point is r same thing for this side parallel to rp we draw and we project this p point here on this abscissa and we get a q point here okay now this pq is nothing but the sigma v that is the variable stress and this rp is nothing but the mean the sigma and that is the mean stress now let's see this so this two triangle that is triangle c o d and triangle p q d are similar triangle so we can say that's p q upon c o okay p q upon c o is equal to what q d this q d upon the o d now q d is what o d minus o q you will get the value of q d so this o d minus o q in this way we get this value and p q is what sigma v and r p is uh, p r is what your sigma n or you can say the o q okay so we put this value here and we get the value that is sigma v upon sigma e upon factor of safety is equal to 1 minus sigma m upon sigma 1 to fact upon factor of safety so this is the soderberg diagram and this is the formula for soderberg diagram okay clear in the same manner we are going to design for the goodman diagram also but first we will finish this photogram so this is the soderberg diagram which we have seen now considering the load factor surface finish factor and size factor the equation second which we have seen last on the in the last slide can be written as this way that is sigma we get the variable stress is equal to endurance limit upon factor of safety into 1 minus sigma m upon sigma 1 factor of safety or we can write it in this way and the final translation of this equation is in this way 1 upon factor of safety is equal to sigma m upon sigma y plus sigma v upon sigma e this is how we are going to get the 
value. This is how sort of box diagram explains itself. Now, for machine part, which is subject to fatigue loading, the fatigue stress concentration factor Kf should be applied to only variable stress sigma v. Therefore, the equation 1 may be written as in this way also. Okay, if we applied the stress concentration factor also. And by putting these values, we get this thing. That is 1 upon factor of S F S is equal to sigma m upon sigma y plus sigma nu into kf upon this values. If sigma e b is equal to sigma e into k b and k b is equal to 1, so sigma e b is equal to sigma e. So if you are considering the load factor surface factor, then this formula we can use. And if you are not, then we can use this formula. So we have getting here three formulas one this second is this and third is this one so this is how the solder box explained now for the goodman diagram okay solder box diagram and goodman diagram has have much more similarity only thing is that in solder box we use the yield strength and in goodman we use the ultimate tensile strength this is how so instead of yield strength here sigma u is there we point this at v and endurance limit is as it is at point a and we draw a line between these two points a b same thing divide this sigma e by factor of safety and you will get a point c on this line and same sigma u divide by factor of safety we get a point a value and we point it on this abscissa and name this point as d now draw c d parallel to a b okay now this is the safe stress line and this is a failure stress line in the same way this safe stress line take a middle point of this cd value name this point as p project point p on this ordinates and you will get a point r here and if you project this point p at on axis r you will get a point q here so pq is sigma v this is sigma n which is explained so goodman failure stress line is a b now based on this if you solve same which we have solved for the soderberg diagram you will get a equation that is sigma m upon sut plus sigma a upon sc that is the endurance limit that is sigma equal to one so goodman line is widely used as the criterion of fatigue failure and the component subjected to mean stress as well as the stress amplitude because of this reasons because goodman line is safe from design consideration because it is completely inside the failure point of test data and the equation of straight line is simple compared with the parabolic curve even gerber line is there but we don't consider it so this is the reason which we are following here and the last one is it is not necessary to construct scale diagram as a rough sketch is also construct and we can get the fatigue diagram here so this is the benefit of a goodman diagram now we are going to see the modified goodman diagram here for the fluctuating axial and bending stresses here sigma m is equal to zero and fatigue that is sigma m is greater than zero so here you can see that this is the safe zone according to the goodman diagram this is for the goodman diagram okay sut and this is for the what your uh, what we call that gerber diagram so s e to s y you can see area is less in soderberg but area is more in uh, goodman diagram and if modified goodman diagram is considered so this area is increased with this safe zone so you can see that the area is increased so that whatever comes under this will get a safer zone so safer zone is increased and less resistance is there that's why modified goodman diagram is mostly used in bending and axial stress so i hope you understand this part thank you very much